So here's a quick look at the kind of map that we're going to be generating very simply through GDScript with grid maps. I can land on this. I can kind of run around. It's not extremely elegant right now, but it's a great starting base, and you'll be able to expand on this and do almost anything that you want to do with map creation. So that's what the map looks like, and here's the code. It's just a conversion of the 2D map generation script from a previous video. So in order to use this method of creating maps with GDScript and grid maps, you do need a grid map defined, or more specifically a mesh library to use for a grid map. So I have just a simple scene here that's it's a 3D spatial node, and then within that I have a mesh instance that's just a cube. Just created a simple cube, I didn't change the size or anything, and I applied a material to it so that I could add this 2D pixel art texture. It's just a red square. And then if you have a scene like this where it's just full of mesh instances, you can come up to scene, convert to, and then convert it to a mesh library. So this is the this is the file that I have for the mesh library, and then within a scene, whenever I define a grid map, let's imagine that I didn't already have this grid map. Take that away. Then when I click on the scene and I hit add child node, search for grid map, and then take your mesh library and pull it into this area here. Or I'm sorry, not that area, the mesh library resource for the grid map. And then you have it here if you had multiple mesh instances within that tiles scene that you converted to a mesh library then they would pop up here and you would be able to reference them. There, there would be different values. So we'd have a cube and maybe a floor or a wall or a pillar, whatever you want, however many things you want in there. But for this tutorial, we'll just have one mesh instance here. And then like anything else, you can click on this or like any other grid map, you can click on it. And you can place things manually just by clicking, dragging, and then delete by holding right click. But again, I want to show you how to do it through uh, GD script because why not? You know, you could generate levels through code. So the first thing that I do, since I already have the grid map in the scene and I have access to its mesh instances within, then I can add a script to this tutorial node that I've created. And within here, let me make this a lot larger. In here, I'm actually going to paste some code that I already have. So this code that we're looking at now, I pulled directly from a video. Oh, the formatting is terrible. Can I do this? No, I might have to reformat everything, but that's not too bad. So I pulled this code directly from the tutorial that I did on 2D roguelike map generation because we're going to do the exact same thing here. We're just going to change a little bit for 3D. So we can take a lot of this out, take this out. It's not a node 2D anymore. It's a spatial node. Spatial. We still need these. We still need this array for directions. We can take out grid spread. We'll take out this grid array. I don't think we need the ready. Well, we're going to do everything in the ready function. So we'll take away create level. We'll bring all of this forward just to fit the formatting. Hopefully you can see all this. We need this. So we're. I'm just formatting all of this. Just trying to make this a little bit easier just by pulling in the code and showing how similar it is to 2D just in 3D. And then down here is where we actually create the the tile from that video, but we're not doing that now, so we can just take this away. We're going to replace that with place 3D mesh or something like that. This we can leave, but I don't know why it's... Oh, I guess it should be in here. No. Nah. Yeah, I, I actually should be in here. So it should be in that for statement. And then this, we can get rid of this. The current pixel, we're not going to be using the current pixels anymore. Oh, and this should also be within the, the four. Everything should be within the four. Okay, so I formatted it a little bit. So this is what the code will look like now, just to begin with. And if you want more explanation on what, what this code is doing or, or what these checks are doing within the while, then I'll link to the, the previous video with the 2D map generation. But from here, it's actually very easy. We still have our grid size, which is essentially the bounding box of the map that we want to create, and then the steps that it's going to take. Because at its base, we're just creating a random walker, and it's going to walk in random directions, as long as that's not its previous direction, and as long as that does not take it out of the size of the grid. So whenever we walk, we already have our current position. We just need to place one of our grid map instances at that position. So there's a function. We grab this grid map node. So 
we reference the grid map node that is in the scene. If you see it here, we've got this grid map. And then grid map dot set cell item. So it tells you what values we need. We need the X value, the Y value, the Z value. For item, we're just specifying which instance within the grid map we want. So for us, it's just going to be zero because we only have this one. I think if there were two, we could do one and grab the second one. But we only have one. So let's just do this for now. So zero, 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 uh, zero again. And then the fifth, uh, the fifth variable is orientation, which is actually optional because it's defined as a default int equals zero. So we'll just leave that. So this is x, y, z, zero for the specific instances we want to place. And I can replace these values with current, current position dot x. Now the second value is the y value, but in this case y is actually going up and down, not side to side. So we actually want to leave that as zero, and then set the z value to current position dot y. Not the most elegant, but this should work. So we're setting that at the current position. Now if I run this tutorial scene. I'm down here as the player. I have to jump a little bit. Okay, so there we go. So we, we generated this map, but it's not very large because we have a size of 14 and we're really not doing very many steps. So I'm gonna pump these numbers up just a little bit. So grid size, let's do, I don't know, let's just do 200 because why not? And then 500, or maybe we can even do 1,000. Same thing, hit play on this. And then I come out here and there you go. Look at that, that's actually a pretty big map. And it's all done through code. I'm just jumping around because I didn't really I didn't really prepare the, the player code for being able to look at this whole map, but now I can run around. I've got collisions on this grid map. This isn't the best map in the world, I guess, just because we have the the really skinny hallways and things, but it's a good start, right? We, we use code, we create the, the map. That's really all there is to it. And the code for it's very simple. It's the exact same kind of code as for the 2D but it's not 2D. If you wanted to create, let's say you wanted to create like a cool ceiling or something, you could take this, you could place another one, but then set its Z value as like 20 or something like that. Or, I'm sorry, not, not its Z value, its Y value as 20. And then we come in here and I start hopping around again. And then if we look up, we've got the ceiling. That's actually pretty tall, but it matches the bottom down here, but it's on the top. And then theoretically you could go through, you could go through your cell values and wherever there's not a grid map, maybe you could create a wall leading up to the ceiling and then you would have actual hallways, something like that. Let me just hop around up here. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I know this has been very simple, but I hope that it has been helpful. If you learned something new or just enjoyed the video, remember to hit the like and subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.